Hello and welcome to Jonathan's Arrow, where we aim to shoot for the truth of the whole Word of God. In today's study, we are going to be looking into Proverbs chapter 25 and seeing God's wisdom for us there. But before we do, let us go to the Lord in prayer and prepare our hearts for this study today. Dear Lord, my God and my Redeemer, I want to thank you and praise you for your grace, your mercy, and your truth in my life. And I do want to pray, Lord Jesus, that you would lead and guide in the study today. Give us of your wisdom, your understanding, and your knowledge, and help us to know exactly what it is you are saying here, so that we would use it properly, as right Christians should. For wisdom is the key to understanding the Bible, and I know this very well, and that is why I am trying my hardest to help others to have your wisdom, Lord Jesus. In your precious, holy, and righteous name, I pray. Amen. Let us begin by reading all of Proverbs chapter 25. These are also Proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah, copied out. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. The heaven for height, and the earth for depth, and the heart of kings is unsearchable. Take away the dross from the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. Take away the wicked from before the king, and his throne shall be established in righteousness. Put not forth thyself in the presence of the king, and stand not in the place of great men. For better it is that it be said unto thee, Come up hither, than that thou shouldest be put lower in the presence of the prince whom thine eyes have seen. Go not forth hastily to strive, lest thou know not what to do in the end thereof, when thy neighbor hath put thee to shame. Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself, and discover not a secret to another, lest he that heareth it put thee to shame, and thine infamy turn not away. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. As an earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold, so is a wise reprover upon an obedient ear. As the cold of snow in the time of harvest, so is a faithful messenger to them that send him, for he refresheth the soul of his masters. Whoso boasteth himself of a false gift is like clouds and wind without rain. By long forbearing is a prince persuaded, and a soft tongue breaketh the bone. Hast thou found honey? Eat so much as is sufficient for thee, lest thou be filled therewith, and vomit it. Withdraw thy foot from thy neighbor's house, lest he be weary of thee, and so hate thee. A man that beareth false witness against his neighbor is a maul, and a sword, and a sharp arrow. Confidence in an unfaithful man, in time of trouble, is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. As he that taketh away a garment in cold weather, and as vinegar upon nitre, so is he that singeth songs to a heavy heart. If thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat, and if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. The north wind driveth away rain, so doth an angry countenance a backbiting tongue. It is better to dwell in the corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman and in a wide house. As cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. A righteous man falling down before the wicked is as a troubled fountain and a corrupt spring. It is not good to eat much honey, so for men to search their own glory is not glory. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Let us go back to verse number 1 in Proverbs chapter 25 and see exactly what God is saying here. These are also the Proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah, copied out. Verse number 1 is an introduction to the chapters of 25 through 29, which were hidden away and lost until King Hezekiah's men found them and preserved them for us. Because the fact of the matter is, is that the men of Hezekiah's time were living in a godless land, a land full of wickedness, whom had forsaken the word of God and had hidden away the Bible at that time. 
the men of Hezekiah found the lost and missing words of the word of God and copied them out to preserve them for all generations, just as God tells us in Psalm 12 that he will preserve his word. Verse number two. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. It is kingly, it is royal, to find wisdom. God hides wisdom into his word. God hides wisdom from us. So we are required to go and find it. Why doesn't God just program us with wisdom automatically so that we are just righteous folk? Well, because God doesn't want to be served and worshipped by robots, or he would have just created robots. Verse number three. The heaven for height and the earth for depth and the heart of kings is unsearchable. It is impossible to know the hearts of others. And it is just as impossible, if not more so, to know the hearts of kings, because God uses kings as his ministers of righteousness in this world, sometimes as his ministers of punishment. He sends wicked kings and wicked rulers to wicked nations and wicked people. Amen. Verses 4 and 5. Take away the dross from the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. Take away the wicked from before the king, and his throne shall be established in righteousness. The Bible is telling us here that if we take away evil in society, good shall prevail. That's just so simple. It's, it's incredible. If you take away the dross from before the silver, you will have a pure metal to work with. If you take away the wicked from before the king, you'll have a peer and righteous throne established. You'll have a peer and righteous kingdom. You'll have a peer and righteous government if you take away the wicked rulers, if you take away the wickedness before them, if you get this nonsense away from them. Verses 6 and 7. Put not forth thyself in the presence of the king, and stand not in the place of great men. For better it is that it be said unto thee, Come up hither than that thou shouldest be put lower in the presence of the prince whom thine eyes have seen. God is telling us here, Humble yourself, and you will be exalted. However, if you exalt yourself, you shall be humbled. Very simple and very true. Verses 8 through 10. Go not forth hastily to strive, lest thou know not what to do in the end thereof, when thy neighbor hath put thee to shame. Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself, and discover not a secret to another, lest he that heareth it put thee to shame, and thine infamy turn not away. Verses 8-10 through 10 are telling us that we're to solve our issues with others without open fighting, and that if you do decide to openly fight, and if you do decide to discover a secret unto another, if you decide to tell your issues unto other folks, you'll ruin your reputation. Folks will know that you can't keep secrets. Folks will know that you can't solve things between yourself and another, that you have to bring your issues before everybody else, and that you have to air out your dirty laundry to other folk. Don't do that. Solve issues quietly and peacefully with those you have an issue with. Verse number 11. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. Giving truth correctly and at the correct time is a beautiful blessing. There are oftentimes a very big misconception about when and how and what you should preach and teach as a man of God. Well, the fact of the matter is, is that some things just don't need to be told at certain times because some, some folk won't get it or understand it. It's just like how Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 7, cast not your pearls before swine and give not that which is holy unto the dogs, lest they turn and trample them under feet and rend you as well. The fact of the matter is, is that God tells us that we need to be careful because the spirit of Antichrist, the spirit of evil, is all around us. And you can give the truth when God had told you, leave that person alone. Leave that man alone. Because he's evil and he's chosen to be so, and there's nothing you can do to save him. Verse number 12. As an earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold, so is a wise reprover upon an obedient ear. 
This is telling us here that good men bring out the potential of good men. Good men feed into good men. We help one another. Iron sharpeneth iron. Man sharpeneth man. That's, that's the reality here. An earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold, so is a reprover, a wise reprover upon an obedient ear. A wise reprover will make a better man when that man is an obedient listener. Just, just like a gold earring makes a ear look more beautiful. Same thing, bringing out the potential in others. Verse number 13. As the cold of snow in the time of harvest, so is a faithful messenger to them that send him, for he refresheth the soul of his masters. Work faithfully to bless others. That's all God is telling us here. You bless others by doing right. If you are a faithful messenger, a faithful ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will refresh his soul as well. Imagine doing that for God. Imagine that. Such a blessing. Verse number 14. Whoso boasteth himself of a false gift is like clouds and wind without rain. You curse others with lies about gifts. If you tell your friend, you know what, I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you some money so that you can go and grocery shop. I'm going to give you some of this so that you can be blessed with this. And then he comes to get it and you don't have it. Even if you really meant to give it to him, you lied about that gift regardless. He now knows that you lied about that gift. You're cursing him. You're cursing him with that. Make good on your word. And if you can't, don't give your word. Verse 15. By long forbearing is the prince persuaded, and a soft tongue breaketh the bone. God's telling us here that patience wins. Forbearing wins the day. If you have patience, if you have the resilience to wait and long suffering, you will win. You will win your battles. You, per, you will persuade others. Verse number 16. Hast thou found honey? Eat so much as is sufficient for thee, lest thou be filled therewith and vomit it. God is telling us to be moderate, to have moderation, to be careful not to overeat things just because you found something precious, not to overdo something just because you found something precious. Have moderation. Be in balance. Be a temperate man. Verse number 17, Withdraw thy foot from thy neighbor's house, lest he be weary of thee, and so hate thee. I have a feeling that a whole lot of us, especially modern Christians, or even old-time Christians, have had this problem before. And we think automatically, because of what the church teaches today, that we're supposed to be hospitable to all people at all times, no matter what, and, and continue to allow folks to trample all over us. I'm just sorry to tell you, folks, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible does not allow for Christians to be a doormat for others or allow for us to accept abuse. The Bible is telling us here, Withdraw thy foot from thy neighbor's house, lest he be weary of thee and so hate thee. Don't overstay your welcome, because you will cause others to hate you. We do not have to be hospitable to evil, folks. That's just, that's just the truth. Even your own family, if they're evil in your home, you do not have to be hospitable to them. And the fact of the matter is, is that you can overstay your welcome. You can overstay your welcome. There are, there are people who just refuse to leave. They refuse to understand that they're not welcome to stay forever in a day. Don't overstay your welcome. Be a blessing unto others. Leave. Come back later. Some other time, give people a break. Give people a rest. Verse number 18. A man that beareth false witness against his neighbor is a maul and a sword and a sharp arrow. Bearing false witness causes harm. Bearing false witness makes you into a weapon. That's all you're doing is you're trying to weaponize your words and hurt others. Verse number 19. Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. Have faith in the faithful only. Don't put your faith into an unfaithful man. Why? Because it's like a broken tooth or a foot out of joint. You can't use a broken tooth. If you try to bite into something with a broken tooth, it hurts. If you try to walk on a foot out of joint, it hurts. 
Just like if you keep your faith in an unfaithful man, it's going to hurt you. God is the most faithful being there is. Have faith in him first and foremost. Verse number 20. As he that taketh away a garment in cold weather, and as vinegar upon nitre, so is he that singeth songs to an heavy heart. You curse the sorrowful with your cheerfulness. Leave them be. Let them be sorrowful. Pray for them. And when they come to you asking for help, that's when you give them help. Oftentimes, the sorrowful and the depressed will never be changed from their sorrow and their depression because they haven't gained the willpower to stand on their own two feet, lift themselves up by their bootstraps, and say, Lord, I follow you. You give me your joy. I should not be this way. Verses 21 through 22. If thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. Do good to the no good, and God will punish them for you. You don't have to punish them. In fact, the better you do for them, the better you bless the evil and the no good, the worse they get punished. Amen. Praise the Lord God Almighty that we have a judge of all the earth, in Jesus Christ the Lord. Verse number 23. The north wind driveth away rain, so doth an angry countenance a backbiting tongue. Righteous anger can drive away evil speaking. A lot of folks out there think that there is no such thing as righteous anger. There is. There is righteous sorrow, there is righteous anger, there is righteous fury, there is righteous jealousy. These things are not sin. It is only sin when it is unrighteous, when it is unwarranted and unfounded. If you have a backbiting tongue in your home, somebody who is constantly speaking evil about you, an angry countenance can drive away their evil speaking. An angry look, being angry with that person, not wanting anything to do with their backbiting, that can drive away their evil when it is warranted. Verse number 24. It is better to dwell in the corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman and in a wide house. God is telling us again, as we saw just moments ago in chapters a little bit past, better to have little without an evil wife. <laughs> Amen. I don't pray for any man to have any kind of progressive woman today, any kind of modern woman today, because no modern woman today who has rejected the Lord Jesus Christ and rejected his teachings about how a woman is to serve and to obey, they're no good. These women today are no good. If they refuse and reject the teachings of the Lord God, they are no good, and I don't wish that upon any man. And it is better to be without. It is better to be without a woman than to have nothing but trouble with one. Verse number 25. As cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. Good news refreshes, and especially when it's afar. Just like how Christians will hear uh, stories about how mission groups and, and missions and, and missionaries have, have done these great and wondrous works, and it just blesses our soul that people around the world are getting the word of God. It blesses my soul to know that there is a man in Africa who preaches the gospel every single week and he has no arms or legs. Yet there are Christians who can't go to church because they don't feel like it. <laughs> man, oh man, I'd hate to be them on Judgment Day. I'd hate to sit back and say, Lord, it just wasn't right for me to go. It just wasn't right for me to do your work. It just wasn't right for me to be a blessing. I didn't feel like it. When there are men out there who have no arms and legs preaching the word of God and they're not failing to do so. Such a shame. Verse number 26. A righteous man falling down before the wicked is as a troubled fountain and a corrupt spring. You corrupt yourself by sinning before sinners. That's all this is. 
a righteous man falling down before the wicked. Well, how are you falling down before the wicked? Because you are showing forth your unrighteousness. You're showing forth your sin. See, the Bible doesn't tell us as Christians. This is another foolhardy, ignorant belief that people have today. And they have it due to the fact that a lot of Christians today are hypocritical. So I guess it's not so foolhardy in every, every essence of the way. But the fact of the matter is, is that the Bible doesn't tell us as Christians that we're supposed to be sinless. The Bible tells us we're supposed to be perfect and blameless. Perfect means to be whole or entire, complete. How we are complete is by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and in his sacrifice for us. That is how we're perfect. Perfect doesn't mean sinless. They're not synonymous. They don't mean each other. Sinless means to be without sin. Perfect means to be complete or entire. However, God tells us to be blameless. Blameless is something that every Christian can attain. Being blameless is being without sin against others. Be with Being without sin against people. You know, refusing to sin against other people. Refusing to lie to them. You can do that. None of us can be sinless in this life. However, we all can be blameless as Christians, following the word of God. That's what God wants us. And, and the Bible is telling us here that a righteous man falling down before the wicked is as a troubled fountain and a corrupt spring. That is a man, righteous man. This is talking about a saved Christian man, a right man. This isn't talking about a wicked man. Falling down before the wicked, he has become full of blame. He has sinned against another man. He has corrupted himself. Don't do that. Walk away from that. Run away from that. Verse number 27. It is not good to eat much honey. So for men to search their own glory is not glory. Moderation again. God is telling us moderation. Moderation and moderation. But this time he's talking about our own glory. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is a lot of men seek glory and their own glory in victory and in triumph and all these things rather than seeking God's glory. Seek God's glory. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. All the things that you have need. God will glorify you in your life when you glorify him first and foremost. You shall be exalted when you humble yourself. And finally, verse number 28. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. No self-control equals no protection from evil. A city that is broken down and without walls has no way of keeping out the unwanted and the unwarranted and keeping out the illegals and keeping out the foolish and keeping out the sinful. Just as if you have no self-control, you cannot keep out evil from your heart, evil from your mind, evil from your doings. Have self-control. Seek the Lord. Seek his way. Seek his wisdom. And take control over your life. Proverbs chapter 25 gives us wisdom that was once lost to the world. As man neglected to preach it, just as men are forsaking the word of God today. Don't be one of those folks today who are trying to trample underfoot the Son of God and trample underfoot the word of God by changing the meaning and changing the understanding of what God has said here. He has given us his wisdom, and not all of his wisdom is kind, but it is necessary and it is truthful and it is purposeful in our lives. Forsake not the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to thank you for joining me today as we looked into Proverbs chapter 25 and seen God's wisdom firsthand. I do hope that you'll join me next time for Proverbs chapter 26. And until then, if you like this content, please like, share, and subscribe and give a comment down below and tell me exactly what you think so far. And if you have any questions, maybe I can answer them for you. But until next time, may you have a blessed day.